Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the second Aries Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 initiatives coordination group. As we come together, connecting from different parts of the world today. Let's come into alignment, focusing as one group, gathering around the group heart center. See yourself as a point of light. To recognize the presence of other points of lights. Hearing each other's notes, we tune together. into the pattern of world group mandala, where everyone knows own place and own note to sound. And we recognize the presence of the dynamically unfolding mandala of the group of world servers. And we align with the group heart center. aligning it with the heart center of the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the Christ. And we bring our focus
unto the purpose of our work. Service for advancement of humanity. Preparing the way for the externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the Christ. And we silently sound OM and begin our meeting. Welcome to the second Aries Solar Festival. Together uh, today we will work in the first day of distribution of the full moon impulse and uh, our guest today, Martin Buick, will lead us in this journey and followed by the meditation and sharing. So I invite Martin. Hello, Martin. Please unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, Hello, everyone. Thank you for agreeing to come today to the group circle. And uh, I usually uh, bet with introducing uh, our guests, but today I like one thought that came to me during this alignment is that Martin, uh, you're one of those brightest points in that world mandala of the world group and it's good to know about your presence and thank you for all the work that you do so the floor is yours please okay yeah. thank you very much that's a wonderful introduction <laughs> i hope to live up to it welcome to everybody i'm going to proceed one step at a time and move with you around the wheel under the direction and guidance of Aries and all who work with the Lord of the will. Aries is that divine manifestation to which Christ referred when he said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Aries is the sign of beginnings, the beginning of the creative process, the first step of the soul towards incarnation, the beginning of lifetimes of recurring and constant cycles of experience. This statement describes the wheel of the zodiac turning anti-clockwise. Slide two, please, uh, Sasha. This shows the energy moving from Aries, circled in red, to all the way around the wheel to Pisces, circled in blue. And the energy moves from Aries via Taurus to Pisces be a Taurus in each Gemini, Cancer, Leo, all the way around the wheel. This is called 
in the teachings, the anti-clockwise turning of the wheel. Aries initiates the cycle. And we're told Aries initiates the cycle of manifestation. But initiating manifestation is just the beginning. It's just the initiatory launch of the creative process and is only the first of three great evolutionary cycles, three immense turnings of the wheel over which Aries presides. Basically, Aries is the father of creation in all of its aspects. It is through Aries that the will of the father aspect manifests and evidences itself as power, as spiritual power, just as love through magnetism produces wisdom and intelligence inherent in substance produces activity. Will manifests as power, love produces wisdom, intelligence produces activity. Slide three, please. In this slide, you see the vertical arm of the Cardinal Cross marked in red with Aries at the top of the circle and Libra, its polar opposite at the bottom. And in this image, there are hidden three symbolic elements, all of which point to the father aspect. First of all, Aries itself atop the wheel is the will of the father aspect manifesting through Aries, which governs Shambhala on esoteric on page 156 of esoteric astrology. Secondly, the cross that is pictured is the cardinal cross, which is the cross of the father, the first aspect of the sacred trinity. And thirdly, the vertical axis of this cross marked in red and of all crosses is symbolically the male aspect associated with the father principle. Slide four, please. The, this slide basically summarizes what we've been saying. The will of the father is manifesting through Aries. The cardinal cross is the cross of the father and the vertical arm of the cardinal cross symbolizes the father. I and the father are one, said Christ. Summarizing in just a few words, we might say, Aries manifesting the will aspect of the Father turns the great wheel of creation left to right into matter the first time he turns the wheel, thereby launching the cycle of manifestation. It's actually quite simple, but as we've stated, Aries turns the wheel more than once and in more than one direction and so it sometimes appears to be difficult. We'll try to simplify all of creation today. In truth, Aries spins the cosmic wheel three separate times and each time with a different purpose in mind. I come forth and from the plane of mind I rule, but sometimes my purpose is different. This next slide five, please, Sasha. Here, the purpose of each turning of the wheel, each of those three great cycles of the macrocosm is captured in a few words, in green, in blue, and in red. Cycle one, the purpose of cycle one is the evolution of mass consciousness. Cycle two, the purpose of the second cycle going in a different direction is individual development and cycle three the energies return to the rhythm and measure of the first cycle cycle one but with a changed motive so to, to be clear let's focus on slide six here and summarize again so we know exactly how the universe works. On slide six, we see 
in green, blue, and red. Mass evolution, energies turning left to right. And when you look at the wheel in these diagrams, the bottom arrow that's moving shows you the direction from left to right or from right to left. It's the bottom arrow as Aries proceeds down into manifestation up and around. Mass evolution left to right, Aries around to Pisces passing through Taurus. Individual development, the direction changes. Aries changes his mind, has a different purpose. Individual development, the mass evolution is ready for a new experience. Aries moves there to, to Taurus via Pisces. And then in the last most important cycle of all, the one we're in now after millennia, after centuries, after millions of years, we are returning to the left to right motion. We are returning to the rhythm and measure of the cosmic energies, but with a new motive, service to the greater good. It's entering the age of Aquarius and the turning of the great wheel of Aquarius. The keynote is service to the greater good and the time is now. So these three simple phrases help us better understand direction of the wheel by focusing on purpose. A purpose held in the mind of the Father, manifesting through Aries as he proclaims, I come forth and from the plane of mind I rule. Purpose is held in the mind and directed by the will. It is universal mind and it is divine will. I come forth and from the plane of mind I, I rule. Let's take a closer look at purpose and the Lord of Aries holding in his mind as he turns the zodiacal wheel. Each of these phases of manifestation. Slide seven, please. This is the first cycle, anti-clockwise, as we mentioned, Aries to Pisces. Aries is circled in red, Pisces in blue, the energy moves around through each of the signs. And there's a wonderful place where DK says, as it moves into Cancer, it says, Cancer yearns for life in Leo. Leo seeks release in Scorpio. Scorpio stages the release of Leo. Capricorn consummates the work of Scorpio. And Pisces takes from all the signs. First ray energy is moving the wheel. It passes through Taurus whose ruler is Vulcan, a first ray energy, and it ends in Pisces, ruled by Pluto, a first ray energy. I and the Father are one. I am Alpha and Omega. In the first cycle, mass conscious evolution occurs. Slide eight, please. The direction changes to a clockwise motion. Aries to Taurus over the top and around to the dense planet, I mean the dense sign, fixed earth sign of Taurus, ruled as I said by Vulcan. Vulcan which is the building aspect of the first ray. In cycle two, the individual end emerges from the masses. That great cycle is complete and a long series of lifetimes commences. Developing over time a form, developing a form worthy of the soul, turning into time. The task of the soul in incarnation during cycle two is to cultivate self-consciousness through experience in time achieved primarily through building of form. I will repeat. The task of the soul in incarnation during cycle two is the cultivation of self-consciousness through experience in time achieved primarily through building a form. 
form building and development of self-consciousness, the ahamkara principle, are fundamental to this second turning of the wheel. The Tibetan describes this second major evolutionary period in unique language. Paraphrasing DK, when cycle one is complete, quote, the mass movement releases the individual to a life of self-conscious progress, end quote. The direction of the wheel shifts from anti-clockwise to clockwise motion. The evolving unit of consciousness, the incarnating soul, reverses direction to move into time as the clock turns. And the evolutionary impulse flows from Aries around the wheel. Via Pisces to Taurus, the fixed earth sign, until desire in Taurus has had its fill and satiety is reached. Show uh, slide nine, please. This is a repeat image, but with our friend Taurus the bull seated there, satiated, can't you see? <laughs> Aries proceeds in this manner into Taurus until desire for matter is exhausted. I want out, that's enough, I'm full, basta. As students of the Tibetan and of his work know, the decision to turn on the wheel and return to the measure of cycle one with a new altruistic motive, the decision occurs in Libra, the sign of balance and equilibrium and the opposite sign to Aries. As we have seen, Libra is part of the vertical arm of the cardinal cross. It also is a sign of the father energies and of the mental principle. Slide 10, please. Here we read that the opposite objective to desire is the scales or balances. The entire message of the Buddha was about controlling desire. Libra is the door to Shambhala at the balance point. Aries and Libra on the vertical arm of the cross of the Father govern the turning of the wheel, govern the reorientation on the wheel, and govern entry onto the path. It's time for humanity to take this step. Aries and Libra. The interplay of the pairs of opposites in the zodiac is significant. The opposites reflect the interrelation of spirit and matter and quote, bear witness at the same time to the fact that these two opposites are in truth but one. Libra, we are told, controls the hub of the wheel, as explained by Joao Kuhl. The constellation Libra occupies a unique place in the great wheel, for it is the energy coming from this constellation which controls what we might call, for lack of a more suitable word, the hub of the wheel. This is that point in intermediate space where the 12 zodiacal energies meet and cross. Libra, therefore, controls the moment of reversal of the wheel in the life of every aspirant. For there comes a moment in the cycle of lives wherein a point of balance is reached and a relative equilibrium is attained. And over this event, Libra presides. Thus we see the significance of this red line on the vertical axis of the cardinal cross in the diagram we've shown earlier. It represents 
a significant event in the life of the evolving soul and it represents a significant event in the life of evolving humanity. In the fullness of time, at the right moment, in a long cycle of evolution, millions of years, the opportunity to make a choice, to reverse direction on the wheel of life presents itself. Aries, of course, governs this turning point from his position on the top of the wheel in conjunction with Libra. As I said, a sign strongly connected to the mind of God, ruled by three planets, all on the first ray line, Venus, fifth ray, Uranus, seventh ray, Saturn, third ray. The thing to keep in mind is that the shift in consciousness that occurs with reversal in the lives of disciples such as ourselves is the shift from human ident identity, or the shift from human identity or ordinary living to higher identity and extraordinary living in the realm of the soul. A dramatic change in direction occurs as the individual steps onto the path of discipleship, mounting the fixed cross and moving away from the clockwise turning into time in a new direction, turning anti-clockwise out of time, out of the world of form into the realm of spirit. Disciples mounting the path of return have spent time a very long time in cycle two, evolving consciousness through form, perfecting the form of the persona, producing a worthy instrument of the soul. When the form is ready, when the threefold instrument has been developed and integrated, the call to change direction sounds forth. In essence, it issues from the plane of mind where Aries rules and the crisis of orientation as it is called, is precipitated into the life of the awakening soul and precipitated into the life of awakening humanity. The crisis occurs in Libra and through the crisis, the quality called reversal is engendered. All disciples who tread the way of return must pass through this reorientation when the time is right. And the time is right for us and for the advanced members of the human family. For this includes that group disciple that we are a part of, the group we call the human family. Humanity itself has now reached that point in evolution planned from the beginning of time when we as a race will make this decision. We are making this decision under the watchful eye of Aries. The human kingdom as a whole is coming of age and, the, and humanity, the world disciple, the advanced members of the human family are about to mount, are mounting the fixed cross of discipleship to tread the path of return out of matter back to spirit. Aries, the father, and Libra, its polar opposite, are presiding over the decision to join the ranks of that group of self-realized souls who dwell in the kingdom of souls. Few of us are aware of this reality, this opportunity now at hand, and those of us who know those of us who know have a great responsibility to help others understand the scope and the measure of what is really going on at this time of planetary crisis. We also have a responsibility to live the teachings, to embody the truth, a truth that we know from long experience and from personal triumph in the face of challenges. The world desperately needs examples of men and women such as ourselves who have awakened spiritually, caught a glimpse of a higher reality, and moved forward on the path under the guidance and direction of the creative forces 
which dwell in the inner worlds and overshadow our lives. Slide 11, please. This is the most important slide in this presentation. You will see on the left a box where it says Aquarius, the world server, and Pisces, the world savior, both have a universal mission. You will see that Aquarius and Pisces are highlighted, highlighted in blue at the end of the turning of the wheel. This is progression of the cosmic wheel counterclockwise out of time towards the universal. The Tibetan tells us that only two signs of the 12 have a universal mission. Aquarius, the sign we are moving into, and Pisces, which takes from all the signs. Aquarius, the world savior, and Pisces, the world, Aquarius, the world server, and Pisces, the world savior. These are the two motivating principles of higher consciousness, to serve and to save just as desire is the motivating impulse of the lower nature, countered by equilibrium and balance in Libra. With these truths held in our hearts and in our minds, we can, we can complete this review of the three grand cycles of Aries with a summary statement from the Tibetan about cycle three. The, reorient, the reoriented man or woman returns to flow once again from Aries to Pisces via Taurus. The individual returns to the same directed method of the earlier mass movement, but this time with changed and changing attitudes. This is a living process. We aren't perfect. We are changing even as we grow. Changing attitudes of, of selfless service. A personality dedicated to the service of humanity with energies freely reoriented so that they are directed now towards the production of synthesis and understanding. The image on the screen portrays the reoriented individual passing, as DK says, passing correctly through the signs, counter to the flow of time, with universal goals in mind. This is particularly significant for awakened souls such as ourselves, ensconced on the path of return. We are transiting out of matter back to spirit, moved by the urge to serve and the impulse of the soul to give selflessly, which is the very definition of sacrifice. We are progressing step by step around the wheel of life, immersed in the slow, lifetimes long process of resurrection, revealing at each new point of individual achievement a little bit of the mystery of what it is to be human. Let us pause for a moment and be still. Let us close now at the time of this Easter festival with a few thoughts about resurrection. I will begin by sounding the note of the risen Christ. Christ has risen, he is coming again, and the Christ who is returning is the resurrected Christ. One who has triumphed over death and one who has been resurrected into life. He has freed himself from the lure of matter and released the full governing power of the mind. 
let that mind be in us, which was also in Christ. We will reflect on these words in today's meditation. First, I would like to share some thoughts from the Tibetan about resurrection. He calls it emergence from the tomb of matter into new light. In a passage from The Rays and the Initiations, under the heading Initiation 5, Revelation, Ray 1, the energy of the will to good, power, we read. This initiation, the fifth initiation, has always been called in the Christian church by the name of the resurrection, whereas it is the seventh initiation, which is the true resurrection. Christ, the Tibetan tells us, took the seventh initiation 2,000 years ago, though he also tells us that he has not yet completed it and cannot do so until he again returns to earth. The sound that is heard at each initiation was not sounded and will sound again when he completes his mission as he returns and is returning to earth. That will mark the finalization of the seventh initiation for the Christ. It involves the complete fusion of his will with the planetary logos, the Lord of the world in Shambhala. To, in to achieve this fusion of love and will, he must develop a level of sensitivity which is, quote, beyond ken of even a master. It is, quote, something akin to immersion in a realized state of being. It opens him up to the cosmos and the realization of what life truly is. Continuing from Ray's fire. 2,000 years ago, the Christ did not rise out of a rocky sepulcher and reassume his discarded body. He passed through the great seventh initiation. It was an experience in consciousness and being. And he knew the secret of life, of which immortality is only one of its attributes. The word resurrection means back to an original state by rising. Let me repeat. The word resurrection means back to an original state by rising. The Master Jesus, the sixth ray master, overshadowed by the Christ, arose out of the tomb. The chains of death could not hold him. At that time of his rising, a far more important event took place and Christ, or lighting the master, returned back to his original state of being to remain there throughout all the eternities. This is the true and final resurrection. The Son of God has found his way back to the Father and to his originating source. That state of existence to which we have given the name Shambhala. The consciousness of the universal life is his. Soon we will meditate on these things, but let me close by sharing briefly some thoughts about the group experiment in living discipleship that I have been a part of for several years. We began as 12, then soon became 11 co-disciples from around the world, working together under the guidance and direction of the ashram of the Master Moria. 
through an intuitive who is connected with that ashram. In the past year, the group has grown to include a large number of disciples from many different countries and continents. We have been preparing to work together as a group unit in service to the unfolding plan. We have been tasked with helping students of truth and wisdom along with advanced members of the human family to shift consciousness upward and open to the living stream of ashramic life now impacting humanity. We are challenged to lose ourselves within the group that seeks the furtherance of the plan and to embrace the challenge of applying what we know, walking the talk and embodying the truths found in the ageless wisdom. A key goal of our initiative is with due application of what we know to be true, to transform ourselves from a group of separate individuals into a living group disciple. Our challenge, our vision of a possible future is to become a living link between awakening humanity and members of the kingdom of souls actively approaching humanity in preparation for the new era. Towards this end, we are building a bridge in consciousness between our outer group at work in the world and an inner group of ashramic members working closely with the first ray ashram. We use imagery and meditations designed by our inner guides envisioning streams of energy pouring down from great heights, visualizing ourselves entering the ashramic stream. We see ourselves immersed in a stream of love imprinted by the purpose of the Lord of the world in response to world need at this time of planetary transition, planetary transformation. The energy stream we increasingly realize is transmitted into our group field by the Master M via his inner group of disciples. Two groups of dedicated disciples, one inner, one outer, are coming together in living relationship, one with another. We are experiencing the reality and the power of the reciprocal approach forecast by the Master DK as critical to the next approach to humanity by the Fifth Kingdom. We are joining forces for a purpose. Our outer group receives, a, receives regular guidance from the inner guides, we acknowledge their presence among us and we act upon the guidance. It has changed our lives. We now hear the call from subtle realms to do our part to fulfill the purpose of those who dwell in the abode of light, immersed in the ashram extreme. The call to wield light as a carrier of life, to fulfill the vision of those who are greater than ourselves. May God help us to do our part. Slide 12, please. This slide will remain on the screen as we do our meditation. It shows a ram. Aries on a high mountain with downturned horns initiating manifestation it shows a bull Taurus in this case satiated and lifting desire upward in aspiration towards the next mountain it shows a unicorn who has fused 
the duality of the two horns of the ram and the two horns of the bull into one spiral horn radiating light. The unicorn symbolizes initiation and escape from form into the higher worlds, into the universal realities. Let us take one moment and be still, and then we will do a brief meditation. Center for a moment in the brow chakra. Acknowledge your friends and co-workers from around the world, members of the new group of world servers. Picture us all standing together in one great circle of light. Link mind to mind, heart to heart. We are at one with our group brothers, at one with our sisters on the path of return to spirit. In the center of the circle, a great column of light appears, extending deep into the earth and upward into the heavens. Stand silently. Stand in spiritual being, resonant with the lighted presence at the center of the circle, at the hub of the wheel. Listen in the silence. Move together as one towards the center of the sphere of light of which you are a part. Meet, merge, and fuse your energies heart to heart, mind to mind. soul to soul.
Let that mind be in you that was in Christ, the one who has triumphed over death. The one now resurrected into eternal life. He who has freed himself from the lure of matter and released the full governing power of the mind. Let that mind be in you that was in Christ. Immerse yourselves in the downpouring light so that you too might rise. Rise in consciousness, lifting your gaze to the subtle world of light. Acknowledge those like Christ who have heeded the call to return back to their original state. Acknowledge those enlightened souls now drawing near. Members of the inner ashram of the Christ who have caught a vision of the true nature of life. In the spirit of Aries the Ram, acknowledge the will of the Father manifest as spiritual power, manifest through beings of light who seek to further the plan, who seek to guide us each step of the way of return. Hear the words of the resurrected Christ in your heart of hearts. I am the light of the world. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I and my Father are one. I am the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through me, in you, the invisible is made visible. I am Christ in you, the hope and glory. Turn now as one to face outward towards the world. Let the presence and power of Christ and the great ones flow through you to touch the hearts and minds of our brothers and sisters on the way. those who hunger and thirst for new light.
Let us close with this affirmation. Let the energy of the divine self inspire us. Let the light of the soul direct. May we, through the spiritual energy, which is the self, be led from darkness to light, from the unreal to the real, from death to immortality. Lead us, O Lord, from life in form to life more abundant. Om. Thank you, Martin. You're welcome. We invite now our participants to reflect on the impressions from the meditation and from the sharing and share with the circle. And please use the function, raise your hand so that we could unmute you and could hear you. Alternatively, you can use the function of questions on your control panel so that we could voice your thoughts for you, but preferably to hear your, the sound of your voice. I suggest we just have another moment of silence, allowing the impressions to precipitate and be expressed.
Hello, Maria. You are unmuted. Um, hello. Hi, Bart. It's Bart. Um, Martin, thank you for that beautiful and illuminating, uh, <laughs> wonderful talk. I was so impressed with the uh, power of the group uh, during the meditation. And I remember you once sending out a memo that began, I, if I be lifted up, will draw. It was so appropriate to the message you are uh, sending out so strongly. And the bundle is stronger than the single straw, being the cause of amplifying joy. It's an honor to experience <clears throat> your wisdom. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Hi, Kriya, you're unmuted. Um, no, I didn't have a question, sorry. And good to hear your voice anyway. Diana? Hi. Hello. Um, I just wanted to thank Martin for the sharing today and um, the unity of the group. And um, I'm reminded of a saying, I don't remember it exactly, so I'll paraphrase. Um, it's about the numbers um, of those who have answered the call for this service. And though we seem to be a group which is small, um, each of us carries the strength of a thousand and more with us. So with that in mind, understanding, you know, the power of the inner group, uh, there's nothing that we can accomplish in this task to assist humanity and all the kingdoms of the earth in this new step and the new, to the new world. So I'm just so grateful to be a part of it and to be a part of the group. So thank you. Thank you, Diana. Hello, Annette. Hello. Um, thank you very much, uh, Martin. I would like to ask you um, what you think of the significance of uh, the fact that we have two um, full moons in these areas. Thank you. The significance of the two full moons? Yes. I have not thought about it, but what comes to mind is I and the Father are one, so let's say that one of them represents the Christ and the other the Father, and both are present, and both are launching a new cycle. The cycle begins now. The opportunity is now. And we, disciples on the path of return, as was beautifully said, are working together, and there's nothing we can't do to meet the envisioned goal for the new cycle. I think that basically the double area says it started, it has begun. Let us be a part of it with our whole being. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, Kaita, please unmute yourself on your end. Uh, we cannot hear you, even your microphone. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Martin. Hello, Katya. I can hear you now. Yes. Yes, yes. you can hear. Okay. Hi. Um, just wanted to share well, first of all, of course, yes. Thank you to everyone for creating that space in which you know we are truly privileged to receive that note. You know of this energy. And uh, of um, your vision, and of a group that becomes the group vision. And, um, several things that came to uh, to mind. It's just walk the talk. <laughs> I think that's essential because when we say there's nothing we cannot do, you know, I would stress on do because. Um, that does require a certain commitment to to action to actually modify our lives according to the knowledge that we are receiving and um, radiating that further on as um, our teachers you know do and um, our brothers do right and uh, another thought that came to mind is that's the sound. It's just I was listening to a voice. And uh, the sound of it, it just all of a sudden reminds me of this deep uh, um, truth that Christ is sending out the note, and our hearts are responding to it. Hearts and I don't know hearts and mind. I think hearts. I don't remember the exact quote, but that sound and the silence, symbolic silence, that allows the sound to come through. That that would, would, was the first impression, and probably will be more. And. Um, but that's uh, what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you, Katya. There are several comments that have been shared on the chat. Uh, Marta wrote, thank you, Martin. In the silence, we experience the presence of one another dedicated in, respons in responsibility. I actually have a, a question that uh, I prepared for that and it just resonates with what Marta uh, uh, wrote a few months ago, Martin, you shared in the group circle uh, um, an idea that deeply resonated uh, for me and for people who was listening. It's that the hierarchy, externalization of the hierarchy, it's expanding and ascending levels of responsibility. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's not the question. It's 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 uh, uh, again. It's a resonance. Uh, and um, well, what comes to mind when I hear that now is uh, I saw a definition of a master of wisdom in the blue books, and basically a master is one who has identified with the kingdom of souls. We. What are we identified with? <laughs> Compare what we are identified with and even what we're striving to identify with, which is our own soul, with a master of wisdom who at the fifth initiation experiences all that is in a new light. I, I was sharing with Sasha offline 
a thought that I had while reading that section of Ray's and the initiations. Basically, DK is saying that the fifth initiation is really the initiation of revelation, and the seventh is the initiation of resurrection. Don't get the two confused. And the difference, as I understood it, was that a master of wisdom sees all that is, that which is above, that which is below, and that which I am in between in a new light. And basically, senses, the master senses the top of the mountain, the mess that humanity is in. So you have the master at the top, the mess that we're in, and then the initiated master is at the third point in the triangle and in a new light never experienced before recognizes the responsibility of bringing the energy and light, love, spiritual power of the master of masters at the top of the triangle in living transformative service to the mess that humanity is in. It becomes a dynamic, creative, mediating force between that which is above and that which is below. And the very response of the master is to see what I can do to make a difference, to see what I can do, to see it all in a new light and bring revelation. Revelation means something brand new for humanity. DK stood on the mount and took the fifth initiation and came up with things like, let's introduce the idea of the new group of world servers to humanity. Let's introduce the idea of three planetary centers, Shambhala, the center of will, hierarchy, the mediating center of love and wisdom, humanity, tasked with the responsibility of creative, active expression in the world to bring the plan into living expression. Let's write 24 books and see if we can find an amanuensis who can resonate with the vision I just had on top of the mountain. That's a vision of all that is in a new light at the fifth initiation. At the seventh initiation, the Christ became the light. Ponder on this. In a way, Christ is all the masters of wisdoms and all the disciples that follow them. They prepare the path for us, the disciples of today. And what I hear from your sharing today is that resurrection is the path that each of us has to take. And that turn of the wheel from the tomb of the matter back to spirit. That's, that's a mystery that each of us would have to take at some point. Absolutely. One other thing comes to mind, as you mentioned, moving from matter to spirit. And if you can remember, and there's no need to show the slides, but if you can remember that Everything starts in Aries and moves through Taurus around to Pisces or in reverse through Pisces around to Taurus. The focus of the message was on the will aspect of divinity manifesting. The father aspect manifesting. It is the will of God to manifest. When Christ took the seventh initiation and became at one merging both will and love into one 
new identity. He had not completed the fusion and he couldn't complete it until he demonstrated, made manifest the new identity through awakened humanity. And he saw 2000 years ago, you shall do greater things than I, basically he's saying, at one with the Father, I now see a mission. And he's been nurturing the little ones, keeping the wheel revolving and calling all unto service over centuries. And we are ready, willing, the question is able, but yes, we're ready, willing, and able to do our part. That brings to the, us to this I, responsibility to take initiatives, responsibility to manifest, and this ascending and this expanding levels of responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to share um, probably one of the most resonant for the last few years for me. I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> Quotes and uh, I, I just want to ask uh, your uh, thoughts, what brings that this quote, what it's one of the hints that DK gave uh, to disciples about responsibility to modify, qualify and adapt the divine plan. And the plan is not imposed. So it's our responsibility to do that. So. Can you please share with us about your thoughts on that? Well, I would say that M, Q, and A, modify, qualify, and adapt, all have one thing in common, a living response to an established guide or guideline. In other words, the plan is envisioned in response to the purpose of God and it's working out but it's a living response to the impression of what is intended in the light, in a new light that marries need and inspiration from on high. And we, like the master on the Mount of Revelation, our very actions, our very response determines the modification, the qualification, and the adaptation of the established intended plan so that it is a living entity. The plan is, in essence, substance itself imbued with the mind of God, and we play a role emptying of self so that the ashramic stream can pour through us and do its modifying, qualifying, adapting, living response to need as we become the eyes and the ears of the approaching consciousness. We become the hands and the feet in that wonderful image of, from Rorik of Christ kneeling and drawing the putting the hand and the foot and drawing the arch and seeing, saying basically, you are the hands and the feet of the approaching ashram extreme. You are the eyes and the ears. You make it possible for us to have a living response to what's happening. And I could go on to tell you why they changed and delayed the plan. Why in 1952, certain things were done by humanity breaking through the veil, why not one atomic bomb or two rent the veil and let in the dark forces, but over 2,000 atomic blasts rent the veil and let in dark forces, and that certain members of the human family have been attempting to repeat what they did in Atlantis, working with those forces, but certain members of humanity are also here to counter 
what seems to be the most impossible materialism, darkness, and shadow forces with a potency and a light of such magnitude that nothing, nothing can stop it. Some place the case says that if uh, our brothers on the dark path are uh, much more organized and coordinated, and so that's it's our the work uh, for light workers is to become more organized and coordinated, and that's different initiatives like the one you mentioned today that you've been uh, part for the last few years. How this all disciples that that hear that call, and they come with their initiatives forward, and they take responsibility to manifest. How we all can coordinate and work in coherent way. Well, I think that there's a mobilization of the members of the new group of world servers that's been going on for a number of years. And there are various experiments. One of them is called the 2025 Initiative, and one of them is called Living Discipleship. There are others we know very well. The beauty, the beauty of it is, is that we are all together at one on the inner level, on the level of the soul. The Aquarian relationship to spirit is not through an outer leader or master, but through that resonance that allows us to have a reciprocal living relationship with the soul, through the soul with our group, and through the group with all groups. And if we can maintain an alignment with that which is seeking to make itself manifest, then we will be guided in every step towards doing, fulfilling our work within our chosen sphere and every step towards bridging one group with another group with another group. We've been given in the guidance that we work with the idea of tinder that's ready to come aflame. And as we are true, to the next step. There's a phrase from the Sanskrit, if I get it from our one of our members, is a Sanskrit scholar, Padam, Padam, step by step. Be true to the next Padam and you're gonna make it. <laughs> Let's be true to the next Padam. <laughs> and coordinate our steps forward. Absolutely. We'll work together. Mary Bell asked if there is a website uh, where that you can refer people to learn more about your initiative. I guess the question is just sounds like, does Martin have a website? Um, we have uh, the Way to, the place to send the uh, information would be to Living Discipleship at, I, I think it's at Comcast.net. One word, Living Discipleship at Comcast.net. If anyone in, in, in the circle could type this uh, website that I could repost for everyone. Um, that people could access it through the chat. It would be wonderful. Um, Katya, you wanted to say something. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, um, no, this, uh, when you were talking about this coordination, telepathy comes to mind. That's, uh, but basically, Martin said that. You know, it's, it's good to read that little book, the telepathy. And, um, 
to start to go, um, emerging ourselves deeper in that concept because it's happening to my understanding but uh, some of us have you know little knowledge about that and you know you now every time I read this book it makes sense and more sense and more sense and more sense and um, it's uh, I think that is uh, the key to working together as a group as a larger group as one dealing with the group karma with the spiritual goals of the group and that's uh, I don't know. It's to me. To me, it is. I don't know if you can add something on that, Martin. But well, I, I it's agree. It's a question. <laughs> I think telepathy yes. is absolutely uh, crucial. The thing that comes to mind is that thoughts, ideas, impressions are transmitted on a wave, on a beam of light, empowered by love. So all the almost trite ideas in the printed page of light and love are actually living realities. And when you enter into a group experiment of any kind, you basically are tasked with loving one another and lighting the way for the other in place of yourself. DK says that we are moving into a time of life more abundantly Telepathy involves the chain of being from Shambhala through hierarchy, through the new group, through the discipleship groups into the world. It's the stream of these potent, potent energies of will, love, and light that carries the message and we need to respond in living this with, on each of these. So if you picture the human being, DK says the crown chakra is the entry point for life more abundantly. The heart chakra is the entry point for livingness, expressing as love and light. And the throat represents intelligent expression of that. The point is, love one another is the real key to telepathy. whether you're receiving from one another, which we have that wonderful experience in our group. We communicate a lot through email around the world, people from all over the world, but we often think together without knowing that we're thinking together. And it's because there's great love in the group. Thank you. Welcome. Um, thank you, Martin. It's um, time is running, and uh, I want to thank everyone for joining today. Today, in our circle, and we continue our work of distributing the energy of the full moon as we continue our meditation through the five days period. And I deeply grateful for all of you to gather in, in this circle and I invite you to join our next coming webinars on May 5th we will continue the cycle of the new moon following the work with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In this cycle of Taurus, we will focus on the goal seven, affordable and clean energy. So we invite you to take into your daily meditation focus on achievement and manifestation of that goal. And as we enter this cycle of Taurus, we start preparing for the highest point of the year, the Vesak Festival, and on May 15th, which will be the first day of the seven days period of the full moon, we invite you to join the Vesak webinar 
And in preparation for that webinar, we invite you to reflect on the question on how we build our service capacity, how we move from vision to capacity. So we continue our journey together, taking responsibility to manifest, to manifest our vision that we receive through the resonance. Thank you, Martin. You're very welcome. Thank you all for the opportunity.